हेलो हेलो यस मैम यू आर ऑडिबल थैंक यू सो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन माय सेल्फ अर्चना राणे आई एम एसोसिएट डायरेक्टर इन एजुकेशन टेक्नोलॉजी यूनिट ऑफ सीडैक मुंबई एंड आई एम जॉइंड बाय माय कलीग मिस प्रियंका मुंडे हु इज अ मॉड्यूल लीड सो वी ऑल हैव बीन एसोसिएटेड विद दिस विद एजुकेशन टेक्नोलॉजी यूनिट ऑफ सीटैक मुंबई व्हिच इंक्लूड्स अ नंबर ऑफ फ्लैगशिप प्रोजेक्ट्स लाइक ऑनलाइन लैब्स एज वेल एज सफल एंड ई बस्ता एज वेल एज परीक्षक एंड मेनी अदर स्टेट लेवल प्रोजेक्ट्स एज वेल एज नेशनल लेवल प्रोजेक्ट्स सो टुडे आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट virtual labs what i'll be doing is i'll be giving you uh, an idea about the concept of uh, virtual labs purpose of it what are the different type of virtual labs which are there what is the typical ecosystem of a virtual lab what kind of affordances are there in virtual labs and uh, we will also briefly look at uh, in case you want to develop your own virtual labs how you can do that how you can use existing virtual labs there are number of uh, uh good resources related to virtual labs which are available in india as well as outside india and how you can use that disseminate those in your uh, sessions so um before we start we will just uh, do a quick um, uh just we want to do kind of a quick uh, uh, information gathering that what comes into your mind when you think about um, virtual labs so what you have to do is uh, you have to think about three words you can see that there is a link which is given in the chat box by my colleague uh, so just um, go to the chat box okay and uh, the link is there i'll put the link in the chat box it's www.menti.com followed by the strings i'll just put it in the um uh, in the chat box so you have to go there and uh, what you have to do is that you have to put your uh, the three words that come into your mind when you think about uh virtual labs got this लिंक दट आई हेव पुट in the chat menti.com i hope you you can access the link just go to this we are just doing a quick uh, gathering of uh, keywords that come into your mind whenever you think about uh, virtual labs you have to type in three words only don't put phrase or anything can you see that priyanka
can everyone access it anyone can tell me yes. priyanka can you share your screen we would we would like to see um what what is the um, what is Okay, can you see this? What is coming up? I hope you can see. So we can see technology, interactive, digital. Yes, ma'am, we can see the screen. So very interesting words are coming up. So um, digital, interactive, I think that those are the most uh, words that come up in your mind when you think about virtual labs. Just a few seconds more and then we will uh, shift to the uh, presentation. Uh, the idea of uh, going for this was that uh, we want to understand that what, what is your perception of virtual labs or um what what do you think that what what is behind the concept of virtual lab yes i think uh, in most of the sessions this comes up that digital interactive technology practical visual interesting demonstration i think um, you get an uh, get a feel about uh, what people think about uh, virtual labs so let's see now um what is virtual labs all about it's coming presentation yes. so virtual labs uh, the concepts before we move on to virtual labs uh, just quick um, look at what a lab means or what a laboratory in education means so that we all know that it is uh, one of the important devices in the learning process specifically the practical component um, where uh, and in this practical component the learners are expected to get a hands-on feel of what they learn uh, in the classroom the theories that they learn uh, to the classroom and somewhere kind of this is a play place where they connect it uh, to a real life they see uh, what the what what the concepts abstract concepts the teacher is teaching in the class they are able to see that working practically or they test it practically and um, uh, it is a very uh, uh, very useful uh, kind of an active learning process that is happening because the students are getting involved they are no longer just sitting on the benches and the teacher is standing at the blackboard and explaining it the students actually do the lab experiments on their own using the given uh, equipments however uh, though we uh, see that uh, this is a very profound concept and a significant uh, impact uh, is expected there are a lot of constraints particularly from logistics perspective uh, because of which um, uh, we have very limited access to physical labs uh, because of uh, the cost and space requirement and we generally have uh, one physical lab and there are many students, many classes, many divisions who have to access it. So there is a limited access, though most of the teacher want to want the students to spend more time in the practical labs. Similarly, one is logistics aspect. One is uh, the constraints, we can say, of a physical lab. There are certain things which cannot be uh, done in that limited period of um, a physical lab. So if you have kind of 40 minutes or 45 minutes uh, in a physical lab period, then, for example, if you want to see how the pendul a simple pendulum behaves when there is a change. Uh, Ma'am? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, there is a request from one of the participants. They are requesting you to go slow. Okay. okay so can fine. you please go a little slow? Oh, sure, sure. Thank you. 
so uh, not all the activities uh, that uh, that can be done in the the restricted time period of a physical lab for example if you want to take a simple pendulum if you want to see that what is the behavior of simple pendulum uh, in on moon that is when there where there is a change of gravity okay similarly if you take it to a jupiter um what is the behavior of uh, the simple pendulum does it oscillate faster does it oscillate slower or it, it remains the same similarly there are number of uh, dangerous uh, reactions that are there which you cannot uh, give uh, unsupervised uh, to the students to try it on their own plus um, given the limited time period you can only try out certain parameters or some specific default set of parameters Similarly, there may be certain things which may take a lot of time. Some experiments may take maybe two days, three days, or maybe even more months. And uh, similarly, there are certain things which take so take place so fast that you will not be able to see that in a with your naked eye or within a, a particular real time. So uh, there are certain constraints of uh, the physical lab, and that's where uh, uh, the concept of a virtual lab becomes uh, relevant okay so virtual labs and remote labs uh, these uh, this this concept become uh, relevant with the advent of technology we have uh, a number of uh, virtual labs as well as remote labs which are now available and uh, what are the different uh, type of virtual labs so now the the name virtual lab is that is doing the laboratory component virtually or in an online mode okay so that is the concept of a virtual lab now uh, what are the different type of uh, virtual labs so there are you know two different type of virtual labs broadly we can say these are broadly the two different type of virtual labs so there is one uh, one which is simulation based okay simulation based is uh, the lab is you can do the lab over the internet or on on your computer and uh, the 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 laboratory component which you are supposed to do in a physical lab a simulation is provided to you on your computer which the learner can actually manipulate it and they can run the simulation so for multiple uh, for multiple labs there can be multiple simulations so one is simulation based labs that is virtual lab okay that is one one of the type of uh, virtual labs simulation based labs another kind of lab is called as a remote labs now remote labs are suppose uh, there are there is a remote lab set up somewhere some expensive experiment is there some dangerous equipment is there you set it up somewhere remotely and learners can actually manipulate it remotely the way in which over the internet over the network you can manipulate it manipulate it is you can change its parameters you can run the simulations you can use the various controls which are uh, used it as long uh, also it is possible that even people students from different places so if the students are geographically located at other places they can also together join and they can actually manipulate the labs so these are primarily the two different type of uh, labs category of labs that uh, we can look at that is virtual labs as well as uh, virtual lab simulation based as well as the remote uh, based labs which are uh, which can be manipulated remotely now virtual labs uh, the focus of this session is simulation based uh, labs uh, that is labs which do have uh, simulation as a component a software simulation as a component so you don't need any hardware equipment or different hardware equipment generally a computer or a tab with internet connection or if it is a embedded uh, lab then even without internet connection you would be able to access it so uh, these labs are there so once it is developed uh, the development cost can be high because uh, there are several components you need to now you need to design those components as per a practical lab then um, uh, uh, even the parameters have to be uh, properly configured so that the behavior is similar to what happens in a physical lab so it kind of attempts to mimic the reality but as we all know that it's uh, not the reality and uh, kindly note that we always put this disclaimer to whenever we do any kind of training sessions on virtual lab is that 
uh, virtual labs can never be a replacement to a physical lab. The kind of learning that happens in physical lab, we cannot replace it. Uh, and no, no virtual labs, no sophisticated virtual lab in this world can replace that. But of course, we can look at it as amplifiers, something which augments a physical lab. It can be something which supplements the physical lab. So um, apart from mimicking what is happening in the physical lab, there are also certain affordances. Affordances in this is certain value add, value adds, which this simulation can be pro can provide, which is not possible in a physical lab. So if you recall, what we discussed is that uh, we, uh, the physical lab have constraints such as um, uh, certain things which like gravity or uh, certain parameter changing is not possible always in the physical lab. But uh, in uh, uh, virtual labs, simulation-based labs that we can do. So there are boundaries uh, which can be ignored. Uh, so the boundaries that are there, we can actually cross that and we can, within the limitations or the constraints of that experiments, we can provide certain parameters which can be safely manipulated by the learners. I will show you in the demo as to what kind, what are the different kind of parameters that we, uh, we can see in different uh, labs. Similarly, they can be manipulated uh, as per the time scale. So you can slow down very fast reactions or you can speed up very slow reactions. You can repeat it several times and see it. So uh, there are opportunities is, that is crossing the boundaries of what is possible in a physical lab. You can actually simulate the environment of say Mars or Moon or Jupiter or Saturn and see that how it is happening what what exactly happens uh, in in the in that environment okay so we see virtual labs as very powerful devices uh, which can stimulate thinking of uh, learners now uh, if when you talk about a typical uh, virtual labs so one would wonder that uh, what are the things that would go in typical virtual labs of course if we are talking about uh, simulation based labs then simulation is the core simulator is the main component okay but just giving a core simulator to the learner uh, is not going to suffice because um, we also need to give them um, uh, certain instructions uh, to use the simulation so we are talking about the ecosystem of a virtual lab so apart from the core simulator or the simulation component um, it also has uh, it should also have uh, 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 the proper instructions, guidelines to execute it, relevant theory. So we don't want a complete textbook chapter to be included with the labs. Ideally, the labs should have theory which is very relevant to the lab. Okay. So if you're talking about Ohm's law as one of the lab, then any theory component which is related to very specific to these labs, concepts related to specific to the lab, should be made available to the learner as a so that they can they can access it and they can uh, uh, they can actually use the simulator in a better way they understand the concepts in the simulator similarly any lab is incomplete or particularly like physics lab we do have uh, observation table and uh, we have to plot graphs cert at certain places so these components as and when required should also be made available to the learner so that these with this all a complete ecosystem the learner can actually execute the complete lab online and certain review questions which where you can immediately give feedback to the learner is useful is because that is actually going to help the learners to understand the gaps that he or she may have when they are going through the simulator. So they may actually go back to the simulator, try out certain other parameters and then get back to the review questions as well and references for further readings, for detailed readings and so on. So um, virtual labs, if you see uh, the initiative uh, by government of India are these two main uh, initiatives. Um, so these are all free of cost labs which are available for the benefit of teachers, students, schools, colleges. One is virtual labs project. Virtual lab project uh, was um, uh, was the initiative by IIT and IACs, and uh, it was simulation based labs in various disciplines of science and engineering. So this is for uh, higher education, 
and it can be accessed on the link which is given. Uh, then online labs, which we'll be also seeing a demonstration of it. So which are now also available in Diksha. So online labs or OLAPs, some of you may be aware of it. Even if you're not aware of it, let me tell you that OLAPs uh, is a set of, uh, uh, set of simulation based uh, labs, which is available, uh, made available by government of India for the benefit of CBSE schools, as well as state government schools uh, to use school based uh, labs. So it is for class, initially it was developed for class 9th to 12th. Now the work is also going on on um, labs which are for a class 6 uh, to 12th. So how do you access uh, OLAPS? So there are uh, two ways to access it, olaps.edu.in, which is the website of OLAPS, as well as on Diksha website, that is diksha.gov.in slash virtuallabs.html. So do access it. Um, uh, apart from that, so these two require um, internet access in case you are constrained with uh, internet access, as I believe that most of the schools are constrained uh, with internet access or with the regular or you can say reliable internet uh, access. So we all have also made available a, a offline um, installer, which is a Windows based installer. It is available on request. Uh, please do check our email addresses. Our team will be putting the email addresses. Please do write to us in case you want to access it. We also have a OLAPS Android app on mobile Seva app store. So uh, what is currently available in OLAPS? As of now, about 212 labs are available on Diksha, ready to use. There are many more labs which are in final stage of um, completion, final stage of review, rigorously being reviewed by NCRT as well. The CIT and CRT team is rigorously reviewing the labs and giving it to the labs team for making the uh, amendment so that it can be finally published for the teachers. So these are the, uh, for science from class 6 to 8 is available, physics, chemistry, biology from 9 to 12, and uh, mathematics 6 to 12 is available. We are also making available uh, language labs. Uh, in uh, phase 2 of OLABs, we did have some English labs. So this was a high demand at that time that uh, many language teachers, uh, when whenever we used to do OLABs sessions, they used to say that uh, there are uh, several resources available for science as well as mathematics, but for languages and social sciences, there are limited access, limited resources which are available. So if some kind of interactive um, activities in form of uh, labs can be made available for these labs also, though there is uh, these, these uh, topics also, it will be useful. Though we all know that there are no uh, conventional um, labs in language languages as well as social sciences, still work is going on in putting together topics, uh, interactive uh, activities related to the topics so that learners can learn some hard spots, some learn some um, the topics which are identified as difficult to learn by the teachers. Okay, so those are also being added. So to summarize, uh, these are the subjects which are available on the OLAPS website, uh, physics, chemistry, bio, mathematics, language, science. We also have certain labs in computer and social sciences. Uh, okay, AR, VR, it's not a subject, but uh, these are certain labs which are developed using augmented reality, virtual reality, and it may require one um, uh, either your phone or some specific device. That's why we have categorized those labs into a separate uh, tab. It's not as such a subject. So um, uh, most important part is that um, these labs are uh, not only available in English. These are also available in Marathi, Hindi, and Malayalam. So some of the labs, which are OLAB's uh, first phase one and phase two, these are also available in Marathi, Hindi, and Malayalam. Now, uh, what are the features of online labs? So it provides a complete ecosystem, which we just discussed for the lab, which uh, so for every lab, apart from the simulation component, we provide the theory, the procedure for executing the lab, 
then the actual simulation, then certain viva verse questions which are automatically evaluated and uh, also the reference uh, material. There is also a animation or the screencast video of how the lab has to be used. So there are consistency in terminologies across uh, the tabs. And uh, compliance with NCRT curriculum is extremely important because uh, for uh, conventional subjects like science and mathematics, uh, we are uh, aligning to uh, the NCRT lab manuals uh, so that uh, the teachers can uh, immediately use it uh, in their classrooms. Uh, we are also trying to categorize it uh, based on that. So say class six, seventh or eight. And based on that, we are... Uh, 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 we, we are uh, categorizing the labs as well as uh, care is taken that uh, it aligns to that level of class. So if something is for class six, whatever has been covered in that topic in class six, the lab is as per that. It, uh, we don't uh, want to cover something which is covered in the later classes for a class six lab. And uh, importantly, uh, as a teacher, I know that uh, one question that may come up in your mind is that... Uh, okay, the, these labs are free, but what is the quality? What about the quality of the labs? So please note that uh, uh, once the labs are developed, uh, locally, these are reviewed by CBSE teachers, as well as these are also uh, reviewed by NCRD before they are published. So that is, uh, and we are taking care that there is a high degree of interactivity as well. So you can see that uh, this is a glimpse of the lab. I'll also show you a demo of the lab. So kind of this is um, how a lab looks like. So currently what you see uh, on the screen is actually a simulation. And here are these various tabs. And here you can see the different parameters which can be manipulated, like select the metal, length of the wire, diameter of the wire, resistance of the rheostat. So you can see that there are certain values, some ranges are given which can be manipulated. And um, uh, here you can see that there is a, in the snapshot, you can see that there is a place where you can actually add the uh, observations as well. So um, lab specific of affordances are there uh, in OLABS. So in each lab, a set of affordances are provided based on whatever is the requirement of the lab. So where what uh, it is discussed with the teachers that what are the requirements of the lab and accordingly uh, the parameters uh, are uh, are designed as well as the controls are designed. For example, as we saw in Ohm's law, the screenshot, we saw that we could change the material of fire or length or diameter of the resistance wire. Uh, similarly, uh, in some other uh, uh, experiments, you can actually change the temperature or maybe the material which is there. If it's Archimedes principle, you could change the liquid to salty um, uh, salty water or tap water and so on. Um, in uh, languages where languages and social sciences, the affordances are typically that we don't give you caned sentences. We don't give you hard coded sentences in languages particularly. These are um, generated by the system as well. And apart from that, when the sentences are given to you, when the interactive activities are there, the errors as well as remedial actions are also take given to the uh, learner which will help them work on it and uh, uh, understand more about the topic. Now in social sciences uh, we have interactive maps uh, inclu including interactive world map, interactive India map uh, depending on what what is the kind of the topic that we are trying to cover. So it's not uh, something which is that we just uh, take some question answers, but it is something which we which you do with the map or with whatever geographical component has been given uh, to you. So for example, this is an example of the feedback and um, which is given to the learner. So let me show you demo of collapse. This is this. This is visible. Yes. Yeah. So let us see. Um, so you can see that uh, this was a home page. I'm currently going to OLAP's website. You can also go it on Diksha website. So uh, you can go to, um, so for example, you go to physics and uh, there you can actually uh, use a, 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 a particular lab. You can see that there is a lab which is displayed and here is the lab and here as, as for the ecosystem, there are these various components 
of the lab, including the viva boost, the actual simulator, which can be manipulated and um, which can be manipulated. And um, you, here you can see the different components or the parameters which can be changed. And how do we use it? We can actually uh, see the procedure which is given to the learners and uh, they can use it. Okay. For example, let us say that we want to um, uh, count the 20 semivolt, how much time it takes for the 20 oscillations on the earth. Then we can start the timer here and then we can count it. Yeah. Now we can start and you can count the number of seconds which are required. You can see that depending on the gravity, you can see the behavior change also because the simulator is changing according to that. Also, there are certain controls which are there which will help you use this, uh, this, this uh, lab to take the observations here. Now, uh, how do you use it? There is also an animation component which is available where you can go through it and it actually your how to the similarly in text format also the lab is given uh, the instructions to the lab uh, is given apart from that you can see that uh, a video is also given in some labs just to see that uh, how you can do it in a in a physical lab and then there are there are viva voice questions as i had mentioned that uh, once you go through a lab uh, if you see the theory, the theory is very specific uh, to this lab only. It's not a very elaborate one. It's very specific to the given uh, lab, which is there. And then we have uh, the viva verse questions. And um, what you have is that the once you can give uh, the lab to the students and the students can actually go through the review questions as well, submit it and uh, get to know what is correct, what is wrong. These kind of feedback can be received. And these are the references which are there. Similarly, you can see for other subjects as well. So for example, if we uh, go to maths, so maths, you can see there are several uh, for uh, various topics. Uh, there are these labs. So these labs are maths labs are also aligned to the NCRT uh, curriculum. Um, and if you can see, I've chosen this one, the quadrilateral formed by uh, midpoints of a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So that is uh, what is a, uh, the similar, what, what is the property which is there. So let us see that how we can uh, verify it. So what comes in our mind is that um, what if uh, the quadrilateral was something like this, okay? So it is some random quadrilateral and whether it, this property is true for this as well. So you can actually, uh, the learner can try out uh, this for this particular quadrilateral. Uh, there will be instructions and uh, the learner is supposed to follow the instructions and um, We are joining the midpoints. Now it separates PQRS from the quadrilateral ABCD. I will join the points. We'll cut these two triangles. We want to show that actually they superimpose on each other. That means the quadrilateral that is being formed is actually a parallelogram. Okay, so here you can see that it is completely superimposing on it, indicating that it is a parallelogram. And the conclusion is also explained to the student. If the learner wants to restart, again, they can restart. And as many as number of times they want to try out now for a different kind of quadrilateral, they can again check that whether this property holds true. So this is kind of a workbench or a geometrical workbench for the learner and uh, they can try out these things. Okay. Here also you can see that there is a self-evaluation which is there. The questions are there specific to this particular lab and which the learner can attempt.
English lab or language labs, uh, please do check it out uh, depending on which subjects you take, uh, check uh, or teach. So we have English, we have uh, certain labs in uh, English, we have certain labs in Hindi and Sanskrit as well. So Hindi and Sanskrit are uh, the recent ones which we have been publishing after getting go ahead uh, of, from uh, CIT. So I'll show you uh, one of uh, one of the labs uh, in English labs, or we can say interactive activity, which is tense conversion. So it is a very basic. Um, uh, uh, it is a very basic concept uh, in uh, English. That is, we have to see that um, a particular you are given a particular a very simple. Uh, uh, sentence in uh, in a particular tense here here it is pretty simple present tense and uh, what the learner is expected is to convert it into a uh, sentence in present continuous tense and how how this conversion can happen you can see that there is a word repository which is given and uh, the learner can actually uh, go through it and submit it and check whether uh, the sentence which has been formed is correct or not. So you can see that um, uh, the feedback is given here that uh, main verb was expected, but helping verb is uh, put in place of the main verb. So what is the remedy, uh, remedy for this or what is the corrective action that the learner can take is choose a verb which is, has a base uh, from catch from the word repository so this is kind of uh, the feedback uh, that the learner gets and depending on that they can now uh, go ahead and maybe uh, choose some other uh, some other uh, words okay so now you see that uh, the correct sentence was Formed. You can see that the main verb is correct, helping verb is correct, and now they can move ahead to the different, the next question. So this is a new next question. If you want to change uh, the 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 the, uh, the tenses, that is also possible. So all these combinations can be tried out, and accordingly the word repository will be given, and accordingly the feedback will also be made available to the learner here also the viva voice is there so very interesting activities are there related to tense conversion active passive uh, subject verb agreement which are uh, typically the kind of uh, issues which are faced uh, by learners in the english language we are also adding more uh, labs on this and now we'll move to uh, social science So social science, you can see that uh, it is categorized into this four uh, subtopics, geography, civics, history, economics. And uh, let me go to uh, geography. So you can see that uh, there are these uh, various components, uh, uh, these labs which are there. Let us uh, look at um, layers of atmosphere, maybe. So what are the different layers of atmospheres? If you can go to the simulator. Can identify what are they going to learn here. Now, um, it will show the different kind of layers which are available uh, in the uh, in this particular in our atmosphere. What are the names of those uh, the layers? So first of all, it will ask that select the appropriate checkbox to identify which are the five atmosphere layers. So you can say that uh, for whatever is select, whatever is correct, like uh, whatever is correct, it is showing correct selection. If it is a wrong selection, it is showing wrong, not selected, but correct. So you can see that troposphere, mesosphere, uh, exosphere, uh, thermosphere, and stratosphere are the correct uh, uh, atmosphere layers. 
Once that is done, now the next uh, task that the learner is given is to put it at the appropriate places. So the identified five ranges or this, uh, sorry, not five ranges, five atmosphere uh, uh, layers which are there at their appropriate places. In case the learner wants a hint, they can go for the range that what is the range of this particular layer? What is the range of this particular layer? This will kind of give the feedback uh, to the learner or uh, maybe they can go back to the theory. They can read about it and then come back and solve this activity. So this is um, one of the activity which is there. And here also, again, they can give, uh, they, they'll get the feedback, whatever is correct, whatever is wrong. And uh, according to that, so it is showing that uh, one layer is, at the, uh, is selected correctly while the uh, remaining four layers are uh, not positioned uh, correctly. So again, uh, the system is giving option to try again. So this is how the learner can uh, uh, check the layers of atmosphere. We can see some interactive maps as well. So for example, world continents and oceans, this is a, a very basic uh, level of information that is required from students and they generally get confused with what are the names of the continents and the oceans which are there. So here you can see that uh, uh, the continents are marked in different colors and there are these oceans which are marked in this uh, uh, map icon here. And uh, what the learner is uh, supposed to do is, the supposed to do is put, um, the continents at their place. So if we put whatever um, we want to uh, put at the appropriate places, so suppose I'm putting this, putting Africa, okay, and then I'm putting all the oceans. So according to the uh, location, it will tell you that uh, whether it is correct, which are the um, continents which are correctly identified, which are the oceans which are placed correctly and so on. And uh, the hints for whatever is wrong, uh, the learner can go only for those elements, whichever is wrong, only for those elements, the hint will also be provided. So looking at the hint, which is kind of will give a hint to the learner to find out what is the location of that particular uh, continent or ocean, the learner can again, uh, try again again the again the that same interactive map will be given and uh, the learner is supposed to put the uh, uh, put uh, the names of the continents or oceans there you can see that asia africa atlantic ocean australia antarctica were correctly identified so they remain there itself only the ones which were incorrectly identified have gone back uh, and now you have to drag and drop them to the appropriate places so this is that's all about uh, social sciences so similarly you can check out various um, various labs yeah so we'll get back to our uh, presentation it's visible yeah so now you saw that um, how how typical labs look like or uh, what are the different kinds of labs. So the next question that might come in your mind is that, okay, so I have these resources. How do I use it in the class? Uh, how do I actually disseminate it in the class? So based on usage, there can't be a one tailor-made or you can say one predefined method of this is how it should be done or what are the recommended methods for it. There are various options, and so some of the uh, some of these options we are just presenting it to you. I'm sure that uh, most of you are creative teachers, and uh, you will come up with uh, even more interesting and significant ideas of how you can use um, uh, O Labs or a, uh, or a virtual labs in your uh, schools. So do write to us at that time that how how you plan to use it. So one of the usage mode that we suggest is before the physical lab that is being prepared and with the help of limited lab time. Uh, so before going to the physical lab, uh, uh, the lab can be uh, used. So the teacher can explain about it uh, using the simulator and then they can go back. 
so it is uh, to the to the actual physical lab so use virtual virtual lab as a preparatory ground before they go to the lab the next usage mode is after the lab so once your physical lab is done you come back to your classroom or you go to your computer lab and uh, you can give them uh, more options to explore the other parameters okay so at that time they can try out uh, the different parameters which are there since they have freshly gone through the physical lab and they can ask them to explore virtual lab in more details so they can use uh, reflection in class uh, with specific scenario okay so with specific scenario you can ask them that what will happen if i change this parameter what will happen if uh, uh, you know i decrease the length what will happen if i mix these two uh, components what will happen uh, if i uh, give the heat uh, to this temperature so you can ask that and then you can uh, go and check uh, using the simulator you can discuss about that in the class then um, you it can also be used as an instructional device uh, how you can use it as an instructional device that when you are explaining a particular concept a particular theoretical concept you can use it uh, to explain certain laws certain theorems uh, how it works and it kind of it will um, since it is not possible to bring the lab to the classroom you can actually have uh, the lab there you can use uh, these concepts can be shown okay and uh, use the parameters provided to try different use cases and let uh, go and discuss it with the with the learner so you can explain it to explain certain uh, you can use it to explain certain concepts and you can also give them that as a homework to try it out uh, certain cases on their own similarly this is one of the interesting strategies to try it out it's uh, called as active learning strategy so what you can do is that uh, you can uh, search, set, set certain parameters in the lab and then you can pause there okay and you what you will ask the students or the learners is that predict what will happen what happens next for example what happens if i put a weight of 25 kg on the spring in hooke's law what happens when the candle moves closer to the focal point of a lens okay what happens when uh, you know i dip the uh, the uh, stone tied to a string of uh, a, a, a string uh, into a water into a salty water how much liquid gets displaced so these kind of questions you can pose let them think over it don't show what is happening let them think over it let give them some time to reflect let give them some time to think over it let them write the answers let them discuss the answers thereafter you can show that what actually happens and use that scenario as a point to discuss more on this concept by doing this you are actually it doesn't look like a video that you are showing to the learner it is actually something where the students are also get involved they also get put in their thinking as to how i can do this so no physical lab uh, usage mode 5 where no physical lab was available and this actually we faced this unfortunate situation in pandemic where uh, where uh, the students couldn't get access to their labs uh, or in places where there are there is no infrastructure so here also we would suggest that it would it can function as an alternative it's not a replacement it is uh, in absence of a physical lab it can be an alternative so let them perform the activities as envisaged instead of not doing it at all let them do it in old labs let them maintain the lab records let them maintain the observation tables let them maintain the conclusions and so this will kind of give them a feel of the lab activity of course only through the appearance and activities the other things which they can see in a physical lab they will not be able to see but still they will get kind of a feel of the lab activity uh, rather than not doing it at all okay so um, that is about uh, virtual labs uh, type of virtual labs what is the ecosystem of a virtual lab example of a virtual lab okay now um, uh, just uh, quickly i'll tell about in case uh, you are interested to build your own virtual lab because we have been doing it for some time now so um, there are certain components that we need to keep into mind when you have to build a virtual lab don't worry much about the technology part that is there there is much more 
to the lab designing than just the technology part okay so um, core of any virtual lab as we know is the simulator which is kind of the software program which is going to mimic the intended behavior okay so, so or it can be a maths lab where uh, it it is obeying all the maths maths rule even for this so how do you build a simulation what could be the typical step to steps to build a simulation or we can say let us say design a simulation so first of all you identify your topic for which you want to build a simulation identify the scope of that particular topic so if for example you if you want to show simulate a particular theorem a particular law a particular concept then you have to first identify that what is what what uh, what is the scope of it if you have a readily available lab manual for that what are the lab steps which are there okay up uh, now next thing is you want to replicate that thing uh, or replicate or try to in whatever constraints that you have you want to replicate what uh, the what whatever happens in the physical lab into the simulation so the replication includes certain things one is the ui objects so you need to uh, when the student looks at it it doesn't it should not look like some foreign object it should be some familiar object to them so if it's a amp meter if it's a volt meter so you 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 need to have those kind of ui objects you can use images or it can be some kind of graphics can be used so use graphics which are familiar to the learner then you have to decide that for that particular lab what are the kind of affordances or the various parameters that are required what parameters you want the learner to change what is the different uh, uh, things that you want the learner to manipulate uh, to change so that they can see the behavior so accordingly uh, those parameters have to be designed what is going to be the range of those parameters how many parameters are there what is the acceptable range what is the behavior all that needs to be written down then <clears throat> obviously you can't expect that the learner is going to follow exactly the steps what you want them to do they will do something they they may do certain mistakes or what is happening at every stage you need to give them feedback just don't give them right or wrong feedback give them some hints give them some feedback which will help them complete that activity give them options to try again it's not an exam where you where you want to just tell that it is wrong and then it gets done with it it is a workbench it is a activity so let them do it let them try it out and then give them feedback on the mistakes so that they can learn from it and they can complete the activity so based on all these aspects develop the storyboard okay with the decided <clears throat> approach after that the actual development of prototype either you can do it or you can uh, it can be done by a software developer so with the simulation what we need is but apart from the simulation what we also need is this was the simulation part okay which is the core component apart from that you also need to prepare a theory reference material so make sure that it, the theory is very interesting and very specific to that particular simulation then also provide instructions to how to perform the activity that lab has been designed by you but the learner doesn't know that how it is expected to be done to make sure that the specific instructions are given to the learner it's listed down properly help and feedback with respect to how do you conduct the lab how the lab has to be conducted needs to be designed so uh, design and develop conceptualize design and develop the simulation then develop the theory instructions help feedback additional references resources and the review questions is all these th things can be included and then the lab can be made together so how you can build a, a virtual lab so some of you uh, enthusiastic teachers can just try out this very teacher friendly or user friendly um, uh, tools which are available like scratch and geogebra so both have very uh, interesting and very easy to use what you see is what you get visual programming uh, mechanism and hence uh, you don't have to get into the nitty gritties of the coding and nitty gritties of so at at most you may have to look at the conditional uh, the conditions that have to be put uh, etc and you don't have to get into the nitty gritties of the syntax etc so um, there may be uh, more uh, such 
tools but it will it may require some uh, more uh, significant programming skills to do the virtual lab so what we will do is uh, we will show you um, because of time constraints we'll show you um, developing a very simple interactive activity using geogebra uh, our intention of uh, showing this to you is not to teach geogebra but to tell you that uh, this kind of thing you can put together using tools like this you can explore it further for your domain for your area for your topic and you can uh, do it so i uh, give it to my uh, colleague uh, priyanka uh, to please uh, show a demonstration of uh, how a simple activity can be put together using uh, geogebra priyanka over to you So good evening, uh, all of you. Uh, so now I uh, I'll just shortly take uh, one a demonstration of a GeoGebra. So uh, what is a GeoGebra? So GeoGebra is a dynamic uh, mathematics software software for all the levels of education. Then that brings together geometry, algebra, spreadsheets, or graphic, or uh, statistics and calculations in one uh, engine so uh, if, uh, by using geogebra you can uh, perform the uh, mathematics activities of geometry and algebra and computer algebra and it is actually easy to use interface and it has a very powerful features that i will show you in the demonstration part and uh, you can uh, create an interactive learning resources uh, as a web pages. You can uh, download your activity uh, and you can give it to the other to, for their reference or they can try it out on their own. So it is uh, it can be shared to anyone uh, and it is available freely, freely available for non-commercial users and it is available in many languages. Uh, so, so for this, uh, you have to go to the geogebra dot org. Uh, I'll just share my screen. One minute. Yeah, is it uh, visible? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is the website that is geogebra.org uh, and it is freely available. So here you can see that all types of uh, the activities uh, that can be done by using this app uh, is given. That is GeoGebra math resources, community resources. So all uh, already uh, some activities are already done that you can use for your reference. Uh, and uh, if you want many more, then you can just go to the resources. And here you can see that for algebra, it is having one not one not nine resources. For geometry, it has eighty seven. Measurement related activities are eighty four. Uh, likewise, you can uh, you can go through the other uh, activities also. That is algebra using as patterns, division, equation. Uh, likewise, so you can refer as many activities that are already uh, given in this. Uh, GeoGebra uh, website. Uh, if you want to create your own, that is, I will just show you a simple one. So just you have to go to this 
GeoGebra classic mode. Okay, so it will open. So it will open and this is here you can see that this is the workbench where you will try your own activity. And here you can see that this is a toolbar where you will get all the objects that is if you want a point then intersection or a midpoint or a center then you will get a line segment race vector uh, then perpendicular line parallel line then triangles or uh, regular polygon then you uh, you will get a circle then related uh, the other elements of a circle that is a center and radius you will get a semicircle circular arc then you will get an ellipsis, a hyperbola, parabola. And if you want to calculate the angle of one of any triangle, then you can get angles also with a given size. Or if you want a distance of one that particular line, then area of the triangle, etc. So we will use this uh, uh, elements, objects, and we will try out the activity. So now what I will do is I'll just uh, delete this axis. And we will try one uh, pro angle property of a triangle that is some of the angles of a triangle is 180 degree. Okay, so I'll just add a text that is our title to uh, our activity that is angle some property of a triangle. Okay, so this is our title. Just if you want to uh, make a text uh, more visible just go to this settings and do uh, medium and click on ok so now our uh, title is there now what we will do is now we want one triangle okay so we will go to this uh, triangle tool and get a click on this polygon and randomly you can click anywhere on this workbench to get a triangle that is a three points so click one then second point is here and the third one is here and just complete your triangle so now we have one triangle with side a b b c and c a now what we want is the angles of the triangle so now we will click on this angle tool and click on this angle so here you can see that uh, at the left uh, bottom uh, corner select three points or any two lines okay for this angle just i just click on this angle and click on this triangle so uh, what i will get is the angles of the three corners okay so what i get is alpha 90 degree beta is 45 and gamma is 45 now what i need to do is i'll just uh, uh, disable this oh. I'll just disable these names, disable the label. Okay, now uh, I'll just color all these three triangles with the three different colors. Just now right click on this any one triangle and go to the settings. And after that, if you here you can see the color, currently it is having green, I'll just uh, maximize the opacity and uh, I'll just um, increase the size, okay. Then again, now click on the another angle, again increase the size and uh, give the another color and increase the opacity. Now I'll just click on the third one, increase the opacity and change the color. Okay, and go to the style and increase the size. Now we have a three angles of one triangle. Okay, now what we want to show is some of the angles of a triangle is 180 degree okay uh, so i'll just show you uh, just give a take a text text box click on on the workbench and we'll uh, just add the some of the angles and this is a just a text okay and in advance just if you click on this advance you if you want the you, if you want to use the objects of a triangle okay objects are what the angle that is alpha beta and gamma are the objects of a triangle okay showing you the angles that is 90 degree 45 degree and 45 degree now we want to show that alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to then the angles uh, of a triangle and the sum of the angles okay so i'll just use a uh, normal uh, text that is alpha 
uh, I'll use this. It, it is a, just a text to show uh, to show on the uh, screen. That is alpha plus beta plus gamma. Okay. Now it is showing you the, the text. Okay, this is just a text. Now I will add actual angles. Okay, again click, then equal to. Now we want the angles that is 45 degrees. So what we want uh, uh, needs to use is the objects of that triangle. Okay, for that you have to go to this. Uh, GeoGebra uh, icon is there in advance. GeoGebra icon is there. Just <coughs> click on that. Then you will get actual <coughs> objects of the triangle. Now we uh, need to choose the angles that is alpha plus beta plus gamma. Okay. Now we have chosen this. Okay. Click on okay. So currently here you can see that it is showing you the angles. If you change the any of the uh, vertex of a triangle, then you can see that the angles are changing. Now we want to show the ang sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degree. Now here you can see that the on the left uh, left hand side at the bottom input is there. Okay. Now we want the sum of all these three triangles. So we will take a one text and equal to sum of these three. So click on alpha plus beta plus gamma okay so here you can see that it is show if i just remove this this alpha plus beta is 136.57 degree now if i add gamma then it is showing you 180 degree okay so click on enter so now we have one object which is uh, the name of that object is sum which is 180 degree whenever i move this triangle uh, vertex it is showing me uh, the uh, the sum is uh, any time is 180 degree so now we will use this sum object in our activity again go to the uh, text and click on equal to use here you can see that our object has come that is sum just click on it okay so now we got sum equals to 180 degrees so whenever i move this triangle my sum of the angles should be 180 degree so it is if you uh, make any type of triangle that is isosceles or equilateral triangle but your uh, the sum of the angles uh, of the triangle is uh, every time it is a 180 degree. So this is one simple activity that can be done by using GeoGebra. So you can try it out the other activities also by using this uh, uh, GeoGebra tool and with the help of this elements or objects given in this uh, GeoGebra tool. So this is all about the GeoGebra. Uh, so I will uh, hand over to uh, Miss Archana. Thank you, Priyanka. Just sharing my presentation again. Okay, am I audible now? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Yeah, yeah, thank you.
yeah so as you saw that um, so similarly you can create activities so geogebra you can create activities like for geometry or algebra or there may be other activities you can develop using maybe scratch so the core idea if you understand that what takes to develop a lab i think that is more important that what are the different aspects you want to, the learners to try it out on their own you don't want to just do something which they just try out one parameter and they, they get done with it then try to give them a, a rich workbench which is uh, which they can try out which builds their curiosity they get engaged into it and they can try out various options and that is going to help them uh, learn in a uh, better way that particular concept so uh, adopting the virtual labs um, you can see that uh, provide a comprehensive ecosystem and uh, to reduce time to use so give them theory give them procedure give them hints instructions etc provide rich set of affordances and guidance and try as much as possible it should be aligned to the curriculum so that they can also relate to that the particular uh, textbook chapter or the the wherever the topic is covered uh, it is easier for them to relate uh, to it now um, though we can talk about uh, there are number of affordances of virtual labs uh, of course there are also um, many challenges uh, which are associated with virtual labs and actively research is uh, going on in these areas um, that how this can be addressed and the new labs are coming up with uh, certain options to address uh, this so uh, some challenges are how do we evaluate what is happening um, uh, evaluation of the labs so um, how do you evaluate that uh, whether the learner has understood uh, that particular concept then collaboration is one of the one of the key challenges in labs uh, in as you know in physical lab uh, the learner generally does does it with a partner so they have some kind of discussion that is happening some kind of peer learning that is happening which generally doesn't uh, happen uh, in a, a lab which is where the lab the learner is mostly isolated so you can give uh, uh, certain labs which can be done uh, together now uh, some of the labs are also coming up with uh, collaborative experiences where the lab simulation can be shared and manipulated by two people sitting remotely so this all research work is currently uh, going on in the research community not related to labs but also in other virtual simulation labs which are there retaining interest is extremely important uh, a learner um, a online learner has a limited time span and you need to keep them hooked uh, hooked to the activity so it is important uh, that you retain their interest uh, make it visually appealing make it easy to use so that they don't get frustrated and they get engaged into it immersive experience um, that is uh, they they get into the flow they get get a feel of those uh, components so with this the augmented and the virtual realities we also have uh, immersive experience uh, labs which are now um, uh, which are now available and uh, which are also getting into mainstream and labs for non science subjects uh, we have already started working on that uh, in our, in o labs as well that is uh, looking at uh, labs beyond the, the the you can say the stem subjects so, so looking at social sciences looking at languages and so on so uh, as we know that there is no real concept of lab in this and creating a lab environment will be useful and we just uh, we we all saw that uh, there can be certain interactive activities which you can certainly develop uh, for this particular for this particular uh, subjects then uh, improved uh, user experience so currently we have a mouse to manipulate everything uh, in the lab so we have a mouse or uh, we, we we can use it so uh, maybe we can also have a improved experience where uh, with certain gestures hand gestures finger movements you can actually manipulate uh, the the, uh, the lab or you can give instructions oral instructions uh, to the lab and get it uh, manipulated you can have haptic devices which can help you feel the pressure etc related to it so these are all modern age devices modern age techniques 
uh, which are now finding their way into the virtual uh, lab space and uh, we hope that uh, uh, with uh, with time these also uh, are as uh, will or will be commonly used and commonly available as uh, virtual labs are so looking ahead for uh, us related to the virtual labs on diksha it's a very satisfying experience cbsc and crt um, are uh, and maybe i got very feedback are on board and uh, we are getting a uh, very good feedback from them review uh, a very strict review and um, uh, the review is happening um, insightful review uh, feedback we are getting and uh, we are getting feedback positive feedback from many uh, teachers so we are working further on more classes and subjects i saw some message which talked about uh, is it available for primary classes so see for primary currently it is available from 6th onwards earlier we only had it for 9th 10th in the second phase we did it for 9th 10th 11th 12th now in this olabs next generation phase we are also doing for 6th 7th 8th 9th 10th 11th 12th so yes we are slowly expanding the base uh, developing labs is not a very easy task it requires a lot of um uh, it requires a, a lot of the um uh, you know effort in designing and uh, developing uh, the labs uh, uh, um, a significant amount of time goes in um review cycles as well so um this can can't be done just by one team it is very important that many teachers like uh, like you join us who are enthusiastic in providing feedback to us to give us um, your inputs about ideas for labs or um, give us um, uh, uh, some suggestions so that we can improve our labs so please see these are the uh, some of our uh, uh, contact details my team will also put it in the chat um, so email address website facebook so here we also put about details about any further sessions that we are planning so that is all about uh, this session from our side we'll be happy uh, to answer the questions that you have thank you all for patiently uh, attending the session thank you ma'am uh, thank you archana ma'am and uh, priyanka ma'am for the wonderful session If anyone has any question, you can ask the questions uh, now. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I would request Miss Amrita Bhattacharjee from Tripura to please respond. 